it's a waste of time. Oh, yes, he's at a technical rate. But it's a waste of your time, which isn't quite so bad. Oh, and he wants you to be especially nice to her. Still, you're good at that, eh? Being nice to people. Have the door down. Why me? Because you went on the course. We're being followed. Don't turn around. Can't you ever stop being a copper? It's not even as if you're a very good one. I have to tell you that I get followed quite a lot. Mostly by men half my age. You know where I am if you want me. You're supposed to give me a tip. Never trust an Irishman with ginger eyelashes. Davis! It wasn't your fault, you know. No. Get an ambulance! Get a bloody ambulance! Saying I've done anything, are they? No, no, I just thought I'd say hello. I've, I've done that break. Just look at that. I bet that would stop a train. That would. It's good stuff. I was going to get a sandwich. Do you fancy a sandwich? No, I'm, I'm very fastidious with my diet. Right. Uh, well, you know, look after your body and, and your body look after you. Yeah, right. Well. Some bloke told me that. I forget who it was, but it was some bloke. Right. He said something else as well. What was that? Um, I said, said um, uh, do your best and, and let the sparrows twitter. <laughs> Mr. Ben. What do you do with it all, Lofty? All the bits of paper? Yeah, I've got loads of things to do. I can't sit here all day. Here, get yourself a cup of tea. Hey, you're not a bad bloke. I'll tell you this. There's no life after death. Hell is here and now. On Earth. is up to you two, right? Right, Gov. Right. 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 Let's get it over with. Here he is, then. How are you feeling? Oh, he doesn't look too bad. No, no, he looks all right. Yeah, yeah, yes, he's... Uh, yeah. We've brought you some bits and pieces. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, I've, uh, I've got a meeting with a man upstairs, so I'll have to, uh, you know, um, 
You, uh, you, um... Alley treat. He's not allowed to talk. Right. That was nasty. Head on. One of them's touching go in hospital, poor bugger. Mind you, the other bloke said he was using his stupid mobile when it happened, so... Yes, sir. All right, sir. All right. This one came from the insurance people. Uh -huh. Sorry. Let me see. Anything else? No, I don't think so. Unless you can have the dog for a week. You're going away, are you? Week after next. I doubt it, you know, living where I am. Well, you could always move in here. I could, but... Um... I was just kidding. Well, half kidding. I'll ask Tanya. Are you sure? Of course I am. Going somewhere nice? Paris. Great. I'm being taken. Great? Can't wait. Anyone I know? No, I don't think so. Someone I met at that thing I do. He's an aquatic engineer. What's that? A plumber from Knightsbridge? Works on an oil rig, examining things underwater. Must be good at it. Drives a Porsche. Must be. Excuse me. Yeah? If you've got a minute, you might have a look at the hot tap in the kitchen. Drip, drip, drip. Used to drive me crazy. <laughs> Cheers. Right, now. Davies. What can I turn you loose on? Yeah, here we are. A nice little shooting for you. A shooting car? A shooting constable. Right. Right. Leslie Walter Russell. That's the victim, is it? No, that's the owner of the victim. The victim is one of the ducks he keeps at the end of his garden. Shot dead last night with an air rifle. Single shot, right in the middle of the forehead. Bang. <laughs> Something funny? Mr Russell says if I was you, I would look for an expert shot with a grudge against wildlife. I'll start at Buckingham Palace then, shall I? You're the detective. Morning, sir. DC Davis, Wilson North. I wonder if I might know. I did it. I was depressed. I'm always depressed, as it happens. Even so, Mr. Belcher. I was going to kill myself. But then I thought, sod it. I'll do something useful and take one of those rotten ducks with me. They keep the whole street away, you know. Two birds with one pellet, sort of thing. I couldn't go through with it. You did the duck and then chicken down. Yes. Maybe if I explained to him how depressed you were. Ah. Ah. He might drop the charges. I don't care. I'll have to confiscate this, I'm afraid. I quite understand. This is the only firearm you've got, is it, Mr. Belcher? Yes, yes. Uh, it was a present from a grateful customer. What sort of work do you do? I'm in the jewellery business. If ever you need anything, I can do it for your wholesale. That's sad about old Lofty. What's that? I found him in the canal. Dead? Just a bit. The bloke on his way home from the power station found it. He thought at first it was a blanket or something. Gets a bit closer, there's old Lofty staring up at him. He was caught on a bit of wire, floating face up. Eh, hey, must have got trapped in that terrible old coat he wore. Yeah, yeah, that is sad. Pissed, I shouldn't wonder. He never touched it. Daft as a brush, of course. Him and his pram and his bits of paper. Next witness, please. Miss Gemma Duval. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. If you would tell us your occupation, please. I work for the social services. Your work being your connection with the deceased? For the past 18 months or so, yes. 
I suppose you'd call him eccentric. One of those people who just opt out and choose a life that more than anything relieves them of any sort of responsibility. He seemed to me quite happy in his own way. There was no distress. None that I knew of, anyway. There's no life after death. Hell is here and now on Earth. Mr. Duval, DC Davis, Wilson North CID. You're in court? Poor old Lofty. Never harmed a soul. Did he fall? Did he jump? Or was he pushed? Yes. An open verdict's never very satisfactory. You'll be making the usual inquiries, will you? Not me necessarily, but someone, yes. And such an inconsequential little death. I wonder how hard you'll really bother. We'll bother, I promise you. I'm sorry. I was out of order. I know you will. I can never quite get used to it. Hearing someone's life and death reduced to 20 minutes in someone else's tight schedule. It always sets me on edge. You were the first one to come along and get dumped on. Sorry. Hey. One thing, though. He said in court he seemed pretty content, and that's always the way he struck me. Living inside his own head, but not unhappy about him. And then, the last time I saw him, the day before he died, he said right out of the blue something about, what was it? There's no life after death. Hell is here and now on Earth. On Earth as it is in Willesden, presumably. No idea. Can I give you a lift? No, thanks. I like to walk. Bye. Bye. Get out of the way, you stupid idiot! Oh, fool! I'll tell you, Mum! Hang about. Where's this bloody pram? Where is it? Where do you think it is? I don't know, Gov. That's what I'm saying. In the bloody canal. Where else? But we don't know that. Do we? Not for sure we don't. That's why I think we have to check. Well, what do you think that's going to show us? Well, if it isn't there... Well, all right, it could mean anything. But if it isn't there, then it means somebody must have taken it. Well, why would somebody take a dirty old pram? I don't know, Gov. Maybe, maybe someone started a rumour that he kept a stash in it. I don't know. All I'm saying is, if it's not in the drink, then someone must have moved it. God knows why. Not yet, anyway. But at least it would show that somebody else was involved. Somebody threw him in. It's a possibility. And half inched his pram. I don't know. I, I just think we have to look at it. We don't even know if he could swim. Right, well, since you've got your nostrils twitching, let me offer you another scenario. He falls in or jumps in, leaving his pram on the towpath. Then someone comes along, sees his old pram sitting there, thinks, there's an old pram that should be in the drink with all the other rubbish, and chucks it in. In which case, it would have had the brake on. What'd you say? He was always very careful about having the brake on when he stopped. One of his peculiarities. <sighs> I'll tell you what. There's the file. You've got yourself an investigation. I need a diver. I need a psychotherapist, but neither are coming out of my budget. Now, up it. They kept the room for as long as they could, but they really do need it emptying out. I thought perhaps you could check through whatever he left. Should have been done before, to be quite honest with you. Yes, yeah, so well, we won't go into that, will we? <sighs> Not exactly your Armani gift set, is it? Chuck it. I reckon. Oh, 
full of his bits of paper, every one of them, all neatly straightened out and put in bundles. And God knows the connection. I couldn't make head nor tail of it, the ones I had a look at. What do you think? In the bin? Uh, no, no, not yet. I'll have them collected and put somewhere I can go through them. You never know. Besides, I'd like you to think I was doing the job thoroughly. That keen to impress me, are you? You know, I think I am, yeah. You wouldn't have to know if you could swim, would you? I'm not so sure he was keen on water in any form. I think that's what I'm getting at. Anyway, let's see you later, yes? Mr. Lambert, we've not been introduced. Well, not formally. The name's Davis. How do you do? Right, yes, uh, we um, met the... Lambert, Nick Lambert, uh, pleased to... Uh... Am I given to understand you've got one of those rubber suits? Why, what's she been saying? Have you? Well, I've got all my equipment. I'm on a course. Excellent. When did you get time off? What exactly am I looking for? A pram. What sort of pram? You find a pram, I'll tell you if it's the right one. I really do appreciate this. As long as you don't say anything to her. Coppers on her. Just because they found a body here doesn't mean to say that's where it went in, does it? It could have drifted. Not in this stuff, it's like treacle. I do hope he's got a sweet tooth. You wouldn't sell for a dishwasher, would you? Sorry. Still got the plug on? Tempting, but just the pram, eh? What's in this pram, anyway? I don't know. It's all lumped under a blanket. Perhaps she had a baby in there. Nice one. Got it! There you go. Brake's still on. So? So, pound to a penny, he didn't take it in with him. Whatever happened to him happened unexpectedly. Anything else I can do for you? No, no, no. Thanks, a bundle. You nip off and have a nice hot bar. Oh, uh, the stuff that goes in this canal, you'd better get yourself an injection. Just be on the safe side, eh? Especially if you're going abroad. Do you fancy coming in for a drink? What about your bloke? I thought he was coming over. He was, but he just phoned saying he had to go to the hospital or something. Oh, dear. He sounded a bit vague. A bit panicky, actually. Perhaps that's what happens when you spend too much time underwater. You sure you don't want to come in? Mm, yes, thanks. Besides, I've got Maud with me. Where? No, I asked him to stay out of sight so he doesn't offend the neighbours. Maud! Afternoon. He's got a pram. Mm, no, that's mine. He's looking after it for me. Why isn't he holding it by the handle? Fingerprints. Well, the possibility of fingerprints. Bye, Julie. I, um, hope you blow, you know. Thanks. Thank you. What's going on? What about the little compartment where they kept the party? Oh, right dear, some of them. That was a waste of time then. I've no opening, yeah. Another box. Every the eighth never had a coronation. All those boxes were made for nothing.
Wilfred Henry Brock, May 1940. For bravery in the field. He was a hero. Yeah, stuff from the war. He was in a prisoner of war camp in Germany, Stalag 62. Look at this. What do you make of this? A list of names. No, at the top. A human skull. Looks like a death list. And fourth on the list is our lofty. Slow it down! Just having a look. You are? Williams. George Williams, managing director of Wishbone. Right. Hello, Mr. Williams. So I can't help you then? Perhaps you can, actually. We'll make it quick, because I've got a lunch. An old fella drowned in the canal just over there. Yeah, I read about it. Pissed, I suppose. I was wondering if anyone might have been on the premises. Saw something, heard something? Well, not on my premises, not at that time. Have you had a word with the security people? They're next on my list. I wouldn't put too much store in them. I wouldn't trust the buggers an inch. But let's face it, we wouldn't need them if we had a decent police force. Yeah. Those were the days. Thanks for your help. Could have a word up there. Listens. They sometimes work late. Yeah, I will, thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Do you know anything about computers? I don't know anything about anything. I'm a policeman. Is it about the accident? What accident is that? One of our employees was in a car accident. Oh, right. No, that will be another department. I was hoping to have a word with the boss about another matter. Mr. Schumann? Well, on then, please. I know you're a policeman. What I don't know is your name. Detective Constable Davis, Wilson North CID. Presumably you're making some kind of investigation. Inquiries. About? About someone who was found dead in the canal. The old man, yes. Very sad. But what is it to do with me? Us, listen, pharmaceuticals. I was wondering if someone might have been working on the premises here the night he died. Someone might have. That would be the... The 14th, sometime between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. the following morning. And the only reason the staff would work late is to receive deliveries. Deliveries at that time of night? Consignments are mostly made using the Harwich Ferry. Sometimes the ferry is delayed. Because of the nature of the consignments, pharmaceuticals, the drivers are keen to hand over the responsibility as soon as possible. Which is why, should they be delayed, they drive straight here, rather than stay somewhere overnight. It comes across from Europe, you mean? From Europe, yes. No, there was no deliveries on the night of 14th or 15th. So, no one on the premises. All right. Thank you for your help. Excuse me. I find it hard to place Mrs. Schumann's accent. She's what, German? Swiss. Oh, right. Thank you. Would it have been a problem? Sorry? Were I to be German? No problem. Just trying to place you. The war was over 50 years ago, Mr. Davis. Yes. You were neutral, weren't you? Best thing, really. There's no life 
after death. Hell is here and now on Earth. He said to me, Colin, carry on. You're doing a grand job. Your men are the best. The best. And I tell you, that is a moment I shall always, always <laughs> remember. Colonel Lincoln. Who's that? Detective Constable Davis. I left a message saying I'd like to speak to you. So it is. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Got a car, have you? Around the corner, yes. Can you find West Kensington? Oh, I think so. Right. Off we go, then. Load of old cobblers, I should think. To a chap your age. Oh, I don't know. Reliving a shared experience always brings a sort of comfort, I suppose. And we could all do with a drop of comfort now and then, I would have thought. A good whiskey and a woman with enough flesh for a man to suffocate in. That's what I call comfort. <laughs> Bloody reunions, I hate them. I bloody hate them. So what was very popular? Housey, housey. Or bingo, as they call it now. Don't know why. <laughs> Played it all the time. The Germans used to love it. They joined in, did they? Cheers. Sure. So, well, they weren't so bad, you know, most of them. Besides, they were the only means we had of getting prizes. Apart from the, uh, well, any stuff we'd saved on the Red Cross parcels and so on. Cigarettes, mostly. Because you didn't come here to talk about that. It's all related. Ah. I was hoping you could remember a soldier called Brock. Wilfred Henry Brock. My God, you're asking something. <laughs> he was a private in the Essex Regiment, known as Lofty. Won the DCM in France. The thing is, you see, Colonel, he died. In what you might call rather odd circumstances. Lofty. Young Lofty Brock, of course, I remember him. Wait a minute, I might have a photograph. Oh, gone, has he? Dear, dear. He never came to any of the reunions, mind you. Probably because he had too much bloody sense. Young Brock, oh yes, young Lofty Brock, of course I remember him. He was the football team. Goalkeeper. Goalkeeper? He was only five foot nothing. There we are. And there's Lofty. At the back there. And see, his name's written underneath. Wilfred Rock Private. <laughs> of course I remember him. <laughs> Neck like a giraffe. <laughs> you had a call. A Miss Duval? Oh, yeah. Yeah. See if you want to have dinner with her tonight. Yeah? No. Nothing special. Just see how you're getting on with your inquiries. What do you think? I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I do. I've only been at it a month, you know. Yeah? Yeah. I was always proud of my wife's ability to sit down at a piano and play a nice tune. God bless her. So I thought to myself, here you go, Bert. Nice little challenge. Get yourself a book and have a go at it. Mind you, she showed me the rudimentals, so I didn't start with nothing. Right. How the bloody hell did you find me? The Colonel. Colonel Ingame. Oh, good bloke, Ingame. Bloody good bloke, yeah. So you want to know about uh, Stalag 62, is that it? 
Someone who was a prisoner there died recently, and we're not altogether satisfied it was an accident. One or two things have come to light which make us think his death might just have some connection with something in his past. Oh, blimey, I mean, there must have been 3,000 blokes in there. Well, what was his name? I might just remember. I've reached that age where I can remember what happened 50 years ago, but I sometimes forget to do my flies up. <laughs> Brock. Wilfred Henry Brock, known as Lofty. Lofty Brock? Oh, no, 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 son, no, son. You've got this wrong, no. Lofty Brock died nearly 60 years ago. I should know, because I was there when he died. Here, what's the time? I must get my pension before he shuts for his dinner. Fancy a walk? No, oh, there was all sorts in that camp. It was not a very happy place. And the worst of it all was, as I say, you never knew who your enemies were. How did he die, Lofty? Someone put a knife in him. But you have no idea, have you? No. No one tried to find out? No. There was no point. You wouldn't have got anywhere anyway. Besides, it was last knocking. There was panic everywhere. And it was reckoned the Russians weren't too fussy about who they shot. So the likes of poor old Lofty was about the last thing on our minds. Did you ever see something like this? Every time somebody died, some nut or other pinned one of these up on the wall. I think they thought it was funny. How easy would it be to take over someone else's identity? Not hard at all. The place was a shambles. You alter your identification papers, such as they were, find a new name. As soon as the war was over, all everybody wanted to do was bugger off home and forget it. Men vanished, some with good cause. What about his family? Don't know. Don't know about his circumstances. But having a family did not prevent people from vanishing. Some of them were only too glad to go because it meant they didn't have to stand here like a bloody lemon all morning. Right, ladies and gentlemen? Right! Who was that? Serena, she works in Selfridges. She's a fine-looking woman. Things that go bump in the night. Oh, God. If she asks, I'm a dental technician. Right. Women, they're like God. They move in mysterious ways. Oh, yeah. Why do they never have the money ready at checkouts? You're right. It's a mystery. Like this one. Only those lips could speak. She probably asked for a bacon sandwich. She looks half starved. All right, Mr. Know it all. Talk to me about the actual photograph. No photographer's name or trademark. Nothing from that. However, I would say it was taken in the 30s. How do you work that up? How do you? <clears throat> Partly, but mostly the finish. What about the finish? It's matte. They were very keen on that in the 30s. In the 40s, duvet colour was a thing, and mostly gloss. Very impressed. Should hear me on teeth. It's not the original size. It's been cut down to fit the frame. Not very well, either. Perhaps it was one half of a wedding photo. She looks miserable enough. Hang on. The 30s. She could have been marrying one of those blokes who's just about to go off and fight Hitler. Your mate Lofty. All right, your mate who wasn't Lofty. Why cut the photograph in half? Maybe they had a row coming out of the church. <laughs> hmm. What do you make of these marks? Looks like bits of dirt or something. What I need is an enlargement. Speaking of which, Miss Selfridge is on the move. Can you focus along the bottom edge? Bring it up as big as you can. What do you think? It looks to me like a row of letters. The top of a row of letters. Or numbers. How about numbers? That's why she's hating it so much. It's a prison photograph. She's in prison. That's why I named my little establishment Valley High, of course. Oh, well, perhaps the King and High is more up your street. Let's play on pronouns, do excuse. That's my Lama with his head shaven. Oh, how he detested that Nike razor ring. Little did he know it would end up being all the rage. Do excuse me. Is that you, Mr. Davis? Uh, yes, it is, Mr. Fulgent. Oh, I'm glad I caught you. I'm afraid I have some news of quite distressing proportions. Oh, yes, Mrs. Fulltames, what's that? I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to vacate your room. Oh. 
Not just you, you understand. All my regulars. What's happened? I think I have mentioned the trouble I've been having with my damp course. Well, I say damp course, but in fact, it's all the way up. Your wallpaper being a very good indication. And I finally got the go-ahead from the insurers. Yes, I know, it's dreadfully short notice. But they say they can only fit me in starting the week after next. Otherwise, it's months. Something to do with the scaffolders. The power these people wield. So, I'm afraid we're all going to have to find alternative accommodation. How long for? At least four weeks, I'm afraid. I know, I know. And no one is more wretched than I am. But think how nice it'll be when we all return. In fact, what I could do is hold a little coming home party. By volivants and so forth. What do you think, Mr Davis? You got any idea what you're looking for? Not really, Gov. Not till I find it. Ah, well, there you go. That's one mystery solved. What's that? Invitation to a meeting of the Bridport Brethren to hear the word of Brother Amos Bedding in the Jubilee Hall, 7.30 on Wednesday the 2nd. Refreshments provided. Oh, dude, we've missed it. There is no life after death. Hell is here and now on Earth. Yeah, well, we all know that, so? So now I know he wasn't giving me a clue as to some inner turmoil. He was just repeating something he'd picked up and read. I'll tell you what, I just... What's that got? I think he'll chew for some promotion. Oh? Yeah. I'm thinking of giving you the desk nearest the window. Ask you something, Mr. Williams. Are you all that copper? Yeah, all right. What is it? That wall, the bit that's been rebuilt. Yeah. What about it? Well, falling down, was it? Yeah, no, not falling down. Knocked down. Some idiot lorry driver backed his load into it some months ago. And some of the blokes here started using it as a shortcut to the pub across the canal there. Yeah, I can see there's been quite a bit of traffic. Anyway, the Obersturmbaum Führer suddenly decides it's a security risk and gets it rebuilt. Waste of good money, in my opinion. Bugger all worth nicking. I don't know. There's always something worth nicking if you've got a mind to it. Who bought what? Sturmbaum Führer. Mrs. Schumann. Well, you know, these krauts are like. I want I knew wall. I'm having I knew wall. She's Swiss. Yeah. Her and Eichmann. Why would she say she was Swiss if she isn't? Well, think about it. I mean, a woman of her age would have a father old enough to have been in the war be a soldier and be a prison guard. Come on, Darren. No. These blokes are turning up all the time. That dear old Mr. Lipowitz, who grows wonderful tomatoes, turns out to be the beast of Belson. Yeah, all right, all right. Oh, you're not convinced? All right. I'll give you another version. What's that, Darren? Pharmaceuticals. What about pharmaceuticals? Well, what better way of smuggling banned substances into the country than in a lorry load of kosher pharmaceuticals? So, they're delivering drugs, whoever they are. And Lofty, don't argue, you know who I mean. Lofty happens upon them, and they shut them up by shoving them in the canal. Oh, it's a possibility. Yeah, you're right, Darren, it's a possibility. On the other end, maybe he just fell in. Excuse me. Are you chance of saving me a couple of my grapes? <laughs> So what is it you needed to speak to me about? Not needed. I mean, you know, not needed. I just, um, I just wondered if you'd, um, if you'd fix for someone to move in and look after the dog yet. Yeah, I said, Tanya. Why? No, no, I just wondered if I could be of any help. You haven't been thrown out of your room, have you? No, no. 
I just wondered if I could be of any help. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I just, you know, just wanted to check you were all right. You are. You're looking for somewhere to stay, aren't you? Hello, yes, good afternoon. I see you have a flat advertised. Am I what? No, I'm not, actually. Oh, I see you only want... It doesn't actually say that. No, no, not at all. Thanks. The thing is, I like that room. You said you hated it. Yeah, but you get used to things, don't you? Like I got used to you. It's become my, you know, my space. That's it, you see. That's how it all starts. The territorial imperative. The root of all the trouble in the world. Could always move into the section house, I suppose. But it's the thought of all those coppers. If you're really pushed, you can always stay at my place. <laughs> you're a really good mate. But I find some. It's only for a few weeks, anyway. You see, the thing is... I'm beginning to enjoy it, living on my own. And that worries me, because the thing about living on your own is you develop all these really peculiar habits. <laughs> I mean, look at you. Look at me what? No, don't worry about that. You said you'd done some research for me. I have. Girls in confinement, Enid Gladwin, 1937. In and out of women's prison, same author, 1949. Paying the price, the crimes and punishment of women by Professor Elkin J. Lothbrook. That's more like a bunch of dirty videos. Yeah, all right, Mod, I get the point. And? That photograph. I knew it's in one like it somewhere. There, top left-hand corner. Same sort of light, making the same sort of shapes. You're right. Chelmsford, circa 1936. They took the photographs in the prison chapel. All the connections are there. Are they? Well, the Essex Regiment, Chelmsford Women's Prison, that little souvenir mug from Clacton. What point are you making exactly? They're all connected. Essex. Ah. Hey, once you get your teeth into something, I eh, Davis? I think the word is conscientious. I think the word is a lot shorter than that. Pop it. Mavis Lillian Prendley, convicted of theft, March the 26th, 1936. They still have the record, and they sent over a cutting from the Essex Chronicle. Woman's theft from country homes. She got herself a job, good references, suss the place out, and then leave a window open so someone nice and small, like you know who, could get through. She got 18 months. Jewelry and silverware. Five charges, three different houses. Where's Powell St. Mary? Near Tilbury. How do you feel about a nice day out on the river? You didn't fancy it then? Go and see her. Probably. But not today. I've had enough fresh air for a fortnight. Tell me about your wife. I said. You started to say. Not much more to tell. I moved out. We agreed to sell the house, split the money, all the usual stuff, but something hasn't quite happened. 
do you live in digs? Yeah. Which reminds me. I don't know if Lofty's old room's been taken, do you? Lofty? No, no, just um, private joke. Private joke? No, private something. Don't you find it a strain? Your marriage, neither one thing nor the other. Neither of us seem capable of quite letting go. Use the poor bloody dog as a conjure, it's crazy. Poor bloody dog, what am I talking about? You have a wonderful life, much better than any of us. Yeah. <coughs> It'll sort itself out. These things do, don't they? One way or another. What about you? Divorced. I have a son, seven years old. Lives with his father. In Kilburn? In Martinique. And, uh, that's all right, is it? No. So what are you saying? You know what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm not saying it. Just think it out loud. Well, it would help if you thought a bit louder. I thought I might ask around. <laughs> You should ask her then. Not that easy. Why isn't it? Don't want to mess it up. Why should you mess it up? It'll be the first time I've, you know, asked someone else since, you know, you get out of practice. Davis. Right. Thanks. I will, yes. Bye. I've got to go. They found that security guard I've been trying to get hold of. You can practice on me if you like. I'm very amenable. trouble finding you. I've been visiting my mother. How long have you been cleaning carriages? Not long. Must be great. Sitting on a train that doesn't move and being paid for it. What's this all about? Sorry. Where you worked last. <laughs> well, I was in your game, sort of. Penstone Security, yeah. What have you been saying? You worked mainly nights, didn't you, Mr. Shepherd? That's right. It suited my then lifestyle. According to their books, you made three regular checks on the Twyford estate. Late nights around 10 p.m., early mornings around 2, and then 6. Give or take, yeah. So you would have been there, checking up at those times on the 14th and 15th of this month. Look, how important is this? It makes a difference to the answer, does it? No, what I mean is... <laughs> Come on. You know the security game. After blocks on nights were having a kip. Well, they got day jobs, didn't they? And that's why I had to get out of it. But basically, I'm a very honest man. What you're saying is you weren't at the Twyford estate at the times you logged, if you were there at all. I, know, I went there, of course I did. But I mean, you've been there. What's there to Nick? It's not that sort of estate. How about drugs? Listens, you mean? No, they went in and out on the same night. Now that I do know. They used to give us a ring and have a couple of us standing by just in case. Mind you, yeah, I can't see her complaining whatever I'm supposed to have done. Her? Huh? The boss lady. Mrs. Yeah. Schumann. Why is that, then? I caught them at it, didn't I? At what? You know. The old as your father. Her and this bloke. Listen, I don't want to drop anyone in it. I mean, we're all human, aren't we? Tell me what happened. I'm sitting in the van, having a quiet smoke, and I see this light go on and off up in her office, and a couple minutes later, she comes out with this bloke. I mean, it's obvious they've been at it. They could hardly keep their hands off each other. They have a bit of a kiss. He gets into his car and drives off, and then she sees me. So <laughs> I make like I'm having a kip. No point in embarrassing the woman, was there? When was this? A couple months back, something like that. 
Did you recognize him, the man? Only by sight. He works there. Look about 20. <laughs> Good luck to him, eh? I had an old woman once. It's fantastic. Tell me something. What's that? This visiting lot. What's it all about? You don't even like me. That's true, I don't. So what's it all about, then? I don't know. I suppose I feel responsible. Responsible? For what happened? I'm responsible, right? I am responsible. But since we're on the subject, I don't think I'm not grateful. Grateful? For looking after me. You? Anyone? Yes, I know that. It's dangerous. I bloody know that. Thank you. I know where and why the photograph was taken, Miss Prenderley, and I'm not here to judge you, just to find out about... about someone you might have known in the past. Whatever you tell me will be in the strictest confidence. Have you been here before? Um, no, no, I haven't. So you're not that new doctor, then? No, I'm... Uh, Where's the nurse? You want me to fetch the nurse? She said she was going to bring the tea. She did bring the tea. They do lovely little cakes, you know. Yes, I know. I, um, I had one, thank you. Yes, you like their little cakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I know him? Mm -hmm. I think I know him. That's Billy. My Billy. Billy Dobson. You remember him, then? Don't be so silly. Of course I remember him. My little Billy. All the girls fancied him, you know. But I was the one he wanted to marry. He got me a lovely ring and everything, didn't you? But my mother put her foot down. You're not marrying him. He's too short. And look at the life he leads. A burglar, I ask you. So I, I had to give it back to him. That lovely little ring. He probably nicked it anyway. <laughs> he was only dinky, but ooh, he had this wonderful smile and lovely eyes. Didn't you, you little tinker? When he got called up for the army, he said, hello, just the ticket, couple of years break. I'll come back, sell all the stuff I've stashed, and we can start a new life. Maybe in Australia, where nobody knows us. So I waited, and I waited. Only you never did come back, did you? Thank you for your time, Miss Prendley. You've been a great help. Has the tea come yet? Um, no, no. They do lovely little cakes, you know. You should try their little cakes. I will. Yeah. I will. Yeah, Lofty Brock and Billy Dobson. Great powers they was. We used to call them Dot and carry. On account one was so tall and the other was a little titch, like, you know. Little Dobbo, he had a very bad case of what we used to call shell shock. He was completely gone, you know. Nothing physically wrong with him, but he was just batty. He used to go around picking up bits of paper all the time. He ended up doing much the same thing. And calling himself Lofty Brock. 
Yeah, well, he probably forgot his real name, lost all his papers. Like I say, it happened. He was a very bad case. Sometimes they never get it back, you know, the old memory. Sometimes it's gone for good, like my ability to pass water. Right, you ready, son? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you feel like joining in, help yourself. Thank you. But remember, I'm better, but I'm not perfect. Who is? Uh, don't lean on my shoulders, son. It's buggering up my concentration. Right, one, two, three, four. Uh, bits and pieces they found in Lofty's pockets. Thanks. I thought there wasn't any. Nah, some sort of cock up in the mortuary. <laughs> uh, yes, madam. It's quality, good gold, nice stones, well set. I'd say around early 1900s. An engagement ring, maybe. Not for your hoi polloi, for the gentry, more like. Stolen, was it? Well, I think it probably was, yes. Excuse me, will you? They've been at it, they could hardly keep their hands off each other. Greta Schumann. Gilly RTA. Gerald. Don't tell me, psychosomatic. Thumped with a Zimmer frame. I wish I thought it was so funny. I've got a really heavy date tonight. That's all right. Hardly notices, honestly. Listen, a couple of weeks ago, you had an RTA around three in the morning on the 15th. One of the drivers was seriously injured, a bloke called Gilly. Stuart Gilly? Gilly, I remember. The one that was on his mobile phone and driving like a lunatic. I think he's still in a coma, poor bugger. That's why I said he was coming home from work. Oh, that's right. At Blisson's. Blisson Pharmaceuticals. Something like that. I don't remember. Look, are you sure? Positive. Check my diary. There was no delivery that night, as I have already told you. So no need for you or any of your staff to work overtime. As I have already told you. You have an employee called Gilly, Stuart Gilly. We have two drivers. One of them is Stuart, yes. He's in hospital, isn't he? He is, yes. Having received serious injuries in a car accident. Yes. Very serious injuries. He's been in a coma ever since, isn't that right? It is very... And may never regain consciousness. So I understand, yes. He was driving home late at night, somewhat erratically, it would seem. Lost control and hit another vehicle head-on. The other driver got away with nothing more than a couple of cuts and bruises. And so was able to tell us that Mr Gilly was using his mobile telephone when the accident happened. 
And when I checked, I found he was telephoning you, Mrs. Schumann. I don't think so. I know so, Mrs. Schumann. We have the company records. He spoke to you or to someone using your mobile phone for two minutes and 27 seconds. I'm sorry, I really don't see the relevance. The relevance, Mrs. Schumann, is that this crash occurred at approximately three o'clock in the morning on the 15th of this month. The relevance, Mrs. Schumann, is that Mr. Gilly's wife says he was driving home after working overtime here at Blisson Pharmaceuticals, having telephoned her that afternoon to say that he would have to work late because of the delayed arrival of a consignment of goods. The relevance, Mrs. Schumann, is that you say there was no consignment of goods that night. So it would seem that either you or Mr. Gilly are not telling the truth. Or that both of you are not. That's why I asked you to check your diary, Mrs. Schumann. And that is why, if you are right, I shall have to go back to Mr. Gilly's wife and say that either she was mistaken or that her husband, for some reason, was not telling her the truth. In fact, was lying to her. I can also tell her, because I have a witness, that on other nights he told her he was working late. He was, in fact, here alone with you. Don't make me do that to her, Mrs. Schumann. God only knows she's got enough to cope with. It started about six months ago. God knows why or how. But there's always a moment. I suppose there is always a choice. And um, we became lovers. We would contrive to stay after hours. And it was then that we, yes, he is 23 years old with a young wife. And I'm 45 with a husband and two children. And if you ask me, was I frustrated? Was I unhappy? The answer is no. I have no explanations, no excuses. I can only say it was, it was madness. <laughs> it would have ended, of course it would. But God willing, outside us, no one would have been caused any pain. No one would have been hurt. And then this old man came along. We were leaving the office when Stuart saw this man staring at us. He had these pieces of paper in his hands and he was staring at us. <laughs> it was crazy. I lost all my reason. My God, I said, what are these pieces of paper? He is spying on us. He's spying on us and making notes about us. And Stuart made a move towards him and he, he looked like he was terrified and he scrambled away through the hole in the wall, down to the canal. And then we heard him cry out as he slipped into the water. Stuart went after. But by the time he got to the canal, only one of his hands was showing, and it was not reachable. Stuart wanted to go in the water and to pull him out, to try to do something. But I said, it's too late. And think about it. We get involved, we'll have to explain. He's dead. Look, He's dead. Look, you can see. And um, he looked at me. And I could see that he was thinking all that I was thinking. And he said, yes, I must think of my wife. She's never, She's had, never had anyone. And then he threw the baby carriage, the pram into the water. The denial had begun. We didn't speak. We just went our separate ways. Then, he telephoned me from his car. He said, um, he said that uh, 
he was wrong, that he can't do this, that whatever the consequences, he will have to explain to the police. I argued with him. We were still arguing. When... <laughs> Next day, <clears throat> I was informed of the accident. I telephoned his wife to ask if there was anything I could do. <laughs> she said no, but that I was very kind. Later on, I had the wall repaired, which was quite pointless, wasn't it? Have you anything further to say, Mrs. Schumann? No. Interview terminated at 17.45. Fancy by a mere point, dangerous. Some of the time, that's all right, Colin. Just a, just a friend. Well, then, um, I call again. Thanks. No, no, that's all right. I, um, I wonder if you could do something for me. Well, if I can, what is it? What do you give her this? Don't say it came from me. It's hers, is it? Yes. Yes, it is. I don't suppose she'll remember it. No, I don't suppose she will. Still, we live in hope, I suppose. Yes, yeah, I suppose we do. The things people do when they're not thinking straight. Hmm? You're Mrs. Schumann. Yeah, right. The irony being, of course, that he wouldn't have told anyone. He was lost in his own little world. Sad. Yeah. Sad. What about you? What about me what? Have you asked her out? I was going to. But? But she had to go back home to Martinique. Something cropped up. Don't know what. Woman who was staying in her flat didn't seem to know. I think it was something to do with her son. Josephine was born in Martinique, you know. Josephine who? Napoleon's Josephine. Who's for a pint? What? Maud? Yes? This flat of yours, I'd have my own room, would I? Of course. And it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be any trouble. You would be Gauguin to my Van Gogh. Without the ear, of course. Well, then, it's all right with you. I'm delighted. I mean, it would only be the odd week or two. Absolutely. Great. Now all we have to decide upon is the rent. The rent. And to set out a few house rules. House rules? An unruly house is an unhappy house. What sort of house rules? Things like... No yeah. animals. Do you hear that? No animals. When, when you say rent... We're talking cash here, right? Uh, cash, yeah. Actually. First Friday of every month. First Friday of every month. 
Now, how much would you talk about? 